The reality is my first year in the business, I did 42 open houses that year and I closed three and a half million dollars directly from open houses. So I'm still receiving clients and residuals and referrals, et cetera, from those 42 open houses 13 years ago. My expectation is I get one good lead from every open house. So how many good leads do I want to have? Well, that's how many open houses I need. Have you ever wanted to spend your life traveling and still maintain a killer real estate business? Well, today's guest talks about how she was able to do that. She closed 20 million in volume while traveling for over a quarter of the year and spending 60 consecutive days out of the country. So you're going to learn the language to use to set the expectations and the boundaries with your clients to do so and thrive. And also... The other half of the show is all about open houses. So what to do if you have no leads in your pipeline and you don't know how to fill it. We're going to talk about how open houses can change that world for you, how to market for them, how to run the open house, how to best convert those people. We have Kim Wilkin. You can find her on KimWilkin.com, on Instagram, Kim Wilkin Real Estate, and on YouTube as well. She has a really, really big YouTube following on a different industry that she uses to actually get cross contaminate, cross-pollinate, contaminate, pollinate is a better <laughs> word, and get clients from there. She works in the Austin, Texas market. She's been an agent for 12 years. She's done 350 transactions, 30 in the last year, between 12 and $20 million in volume every year. She focuses on relocation because of her social media and YouTube, investors, and luxury. She's a team lead. We go into her favorite apps and tools. And she has a bachelor's from, in finance from University of Texas. She specializes in the downtown and central Austin. So if you're looking at sending a referral out there, it'll be for the downtown and central, and central Austin, Texas area. And she consistently ranks top 10% of realtors in all of Austin year after year and holds that certification for the luxury home marketing specialist. With all that said, let's bring on the amazing Kim Wilkin. Welcome to the Agent Goldmine, the only podcast in the world specifically for real estate agents who are stuck at five transactions a year to help them get to 20 plus. Your hosts, Ali Garced and Shelby Johnson, two EXP icon agents, each do over 40 transactions a year and interview others who are crushing it. In this podcast, you'll receive the knowledge to help you scale your business using systems and processes with our interviews and monologues twice a week. If you want to be a part of our community, reach out. Welcome to the show. Okay, Kim, you have been known to sell $20 million worth of real estate in the same year that you've traveled overseas for four of those months, including 60 consecutive days in Spain. How? How did you do this? Well, my opinion is you've got to build this real estate business the way that you want to live your life, or it's going to take control of your life. So anytime that you start a path, and you've got certain style of clients, certain way of doing business. And if it's not taking you where you want to go, you've got to back up, redirect, and head in a different direction. So for me, my shtick is travel. I'm a YouTuber in travel as well as a full-time realtor. And I have been to 65 countries and lived in five. And the reason I do this business is for travel. And in our business, all our clients expect us to be here all of the time. So it's all about the language that you use. And it's all about the expectations that you set with your clients. Now, I'm terrible at boundaries. I'm horrible at boundaries, but I'm really, really good at expectations. So what I have done with my business, and I started this back in 2020, when COVID happened, I saw an opportunity for the first time, people talking about remote work, whereas I've known about remote work for 25 years. And people started doing things online and being in different locations and going to live in different places while still maintaining their business. And I thought, this is it. This is the opportunity. This is how I can change my business to build a business where I can be gone. And yes, in 2022, I did 20 million and traveled for four months, all of it overseas, two months in Spain, a month in Italy, and a month in Mexico. And of course, you you have to pick the months or the time that you're going to be gone. You don't want to be gone in the middle of the height of your season. However, my business is typically quiet, sort of 
first of August through the first of October. And every year I'm gone at least 50% of that time because nobody's going to miss me. Now, am I off every day that I'm gone? No, you can't, you know, in this business, I don't feel that you can take 60 days off without working unless you're really, really good at your boundaries and you're really, really good at your expectations. But you can take off plenty of time. And I did get away with not a single client knowing that I was gone for 27 days. It was 27 days before a client knew I was overseas. And what happened was I had a client call me and she's, your phone sounds weird. And I thought, well, I, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, your ring is weird. I called you three times. I'm like, I know you called me three times. That's why I'm answering the phone. And she was like, what's going on? And I was like, well, I'm overseas. And she was like, well, how long are you going to be gone? And I'm like, I'll be back next week. It'll be fine. And she was none the right wiser that I had already been gone for 27 days. And she was a listing. So you, you can do it. You can do it. You just have to organize your language, talk about certain things. And even if you don't have a team, you have to organize it to make it sound like you are fully supported. 100%. And this leads us right to your golden nugget. So I want to introduce this now. You brought an awesome golden nugget, which everyone can find for free at theagentgoldmine.com. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. And so let's continue going through this, especially with, with the line that you said that you are good at setting expectations, but not that good at boundaries. Can you elaborate on that? Sure. So I have a lot of templates set up all of my language in my buyer packet, seller packet, buyer introduction, email, leasing for landlords, all those big templates explain my team. Whether I physically have all those people on my team or not, that really doesn't matter. I say I have a business partner, which is at, you know, your client thinks that they're at the same level you are when you say a business partner. I say I have a listing specialist. I have a buyer specialist. Instead of a buyer's agent, and a listing, you know, a coordinator, that sounds like they're below you. When you say they're a specialist and when you say they're your business partner, they feel, your clients feel like they're dealing with someone at least your level. Now, here's the trick. I don't always have those people. So what I do is when I get ready to go out of town, I will call a colleague of mine who is a rock star agent, not an underling that happens to live in maybe the same area this client is living in. And I will say, hey, I'm headed out of town and my business partner just happens to live in the neighborhood where you're looking to buy. I'm gonna be out of town, they're gonna take great care of you. Remember I introduced you to my business partner at the beginning of our relationship. And they go, oh yeah, that's fantastic. They're none the wiser. I didn't have to have this big massive team to manage. I get to go on vacation for as long as I want. And I've already negotiated with this other agent who is a rock star. We've talked about referral fees, how much they're going to do, how much they're not going to do, how long I'm going to be gone. And I say, hey, would you like to be my business partner for this particular client for this particular period of time? And they're like, yep, I'm in. And nobody's the wiser. And my clients are so well cared for. Instead of me having a team of underlings, all of these people that I still have to manage. I just go here, here client, you're going to be the most amazingly cared for human being on the face of the earth because I just handed you off to a rock star. How are you finding the agents and what referral fee are you uh, sharing? Uh, typically I find the agents within my company. I'm with the XP and I will just reach out to other agents in that particular area. So I live in Austin, Texas if somebody's looking north, I'll go find somebody that's up there that is well versed, that it's not going to be too much effort, time, energy, and you know, driving time for them. And that's how I find them through my own company. And then if if there's nobody from my company, I've been in the business so long with multiple brokers over time, I can reach out to any of my colleagues and they'll do it because I've aligned myself with people in the business who want to have a life outside of real estate. So we all have each other's backs. And I find that I need my, you know, I need help covering while I'm traveling. Whereas I've got some colleagues that want to spend more time with their kid, 
kids and want to go to all the baseball games and want to go to Disney World and all that. So I'll have their back when they want to spend more time with their family. They have my back when I travel. What was the referral? Is it like a 25% or what referral do you guys do? Typically. Normally? Yeah, 25%. 25%. Yeah. And it really depends on how some of the colleagues that I have, I've been doing this for so long, they'll say, hey, I got your back. I'll show them a couple of houses. If it gets any more than that, I'll let you know. And yeah, totally. sometimes it's just I take them to dinner if if they're just sort of helping out a little bit. If they're full on taking control of the situation is the 25% referral fee and dinner usually. <laughs> then I can see <laughs> my huge friends thank too. You. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love it. That's that's a really good point, especially having been a team leader for years where, you know, I got into the team leader role very quickly. It was like I did one year as a solo agent and then became a team leader. And I was learning as I went, of course. And one of the things looking down now was the amount of money that I just threw down the drain in a lot of ways, just because like you said, where you, you partner with a rock star agent, as opposed to every single new person you want to give a chance and you want, you know, but they, they haven't put in the work or had the full amount of training that, you know, we were providing by the time I was like, Hey, here's a lead. And so it's kind of like that. Like when you are thinking about your business in a very strategic way, especially if you do not want to build a team, it's like you calculated decisions about who you decide to partner with and someone who's already put in the work and has the reps and you know will do an amazing job as opposed to just someone off the streets. So yeah. love the use of that. At the at the end of the day, your clients want to be taken care of and they want to get through the finish line smoothly, seamlessly, easily. They want to be well cared for. And if you can hand them off to a rock star and claim that as your business partner, more power to you. Okay. At this point, we have the language. We're talking about business partner, listing specialist, buyer specialist, and some expectations that you set in the beginning about mm -hmm. how those people are part of your, your team. What other expectations or language should we be you know, curious about or particular to before we move over to how you're generating your leads in foreign countries sure. and how you're staying organized? But have we tied up the, the bow on this first part yet? Yeah. So I have stopped saying I completely. I have a group. So I have a, I have the abundant property group, which matches my YouTube channel for travel called the abundant traveler. So I've tied the two together, but the abundant property group, I just simply say, we, I stopped with, I will take care of this. I will do this. I will do this. I will do this. I say, we're going to take care of you. Our group is going to take care of you. We're going to do this for you. And also all of my template emails say we. I mean, if I'm typing an email, I'll say, hey, I did this for you. But in general, all the templates, all the flyers, all the everything say we instead of I. Even if I never introduce them to somebody, they think that I have support. And if I need support because I'm out of here to some foreign country, then they know that They've been informed, even subconsciously, that there's other people around to help them succeed. That's the key. Introducing them in the bit. It's like putting your hours. You know, when you first talked to somebody, speaking of boundaries, you said, I did say I'm good at expectations. I'm lousy at boundaries. It, I just realized in my buyer original email that I have all these expectations and who they are, but I don't have the boundaries as to what my hours are. And I've had this template for a year and a half. So you know, we all are learning all of the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And in part of that golden nugget, the one of the last ones says to set an autoresponder for your after hours, like brilliant. I never even thought about doing that. Something that like other businesses do. Hey, you've caught us after fucking hours. Try again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go over. So you're very active on social media very. and your abundant traveler. YouTube has over 32,000 followers. Uh -huh. How do you what does that conversation look like when, when you're about to leave, you know, or do you just not have that conversation? You know, like what does that look like? If you're looking to change brokerages this year, so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali said, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word join to either my number 914-318-4918 or Shelby's number 703 
399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. So if I'm gone for a month or 60 days, I really don't tell my clients because I can maintain the business from afar and they've been handed off, right? I may say I'm going to be gone for a week, but I don't tell them I'm gone for a month. Or if I'm going to be gone for a month and I have to tell them I'm going to be gone for a month, then I've already got it organized behind the scenes and I've already brought that other person in two or three weeks before I'm telling the person I'm leaving for a month. So they're already in communication with an extra person because I've prepared my trip long in advance. If I'm gone for a week, I'll tell my clients that I'm going to be gone for a week, but not to worry because you have so-and-so and and I probably have introduced that other so-and-so a couple of weeks beforehand. The goal is for them not to freak out, you know, and they think if you're not there, they're going to miss whatever because you're not there. But most of this job, thanks to 2020 and 2021, we can do remotely most of the time because you can pay somebody to open a door and opening a door is not our value. That's my number one pet peeve. (laughs) I mean, flicking on a light. Do you know how much IP I have? (laughs) I mean, really, do you know how much I know? And you think my value is me turning on a light. So, yeah. Okay. I want to transition to lead gen. Where are your clients coming from? Right now, SOI, but a lot of them are pretty settled where they are. I had a lot of young couples over the past six or seven years that are pretty settled in their second home. I get a lot of leads and I built my business on open houses. I mean, really and truly. And when I start hurting, You know, if I see the pipeline waning, I will start doing open houses again. But it's very, very strategic how I do it. Very strategic where I do it as well. Let's go into that. Yeah, I was like, I'm in. I want to know. (laughs) Please Um, tell us how you do your open houses. I First of all, I don't do all the fancy party balloons and all of that. I do do a lot of signs. But The number one thing I do is I call around to other listing agents in the neighborhood and I only do open houses in the neighborhood I want to work or I already know. Then I call those listing agents and I ask them if they have any additional information that's not in MLS. Do they have any upcoming listings that aren't in MLS? Do they know of any off-market listings? That way, when someone comes through the house, I'm very energetically engaged with them. The way you 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 open the door and you invite someone in. As soon as you open the door and invite them in, you literally back up and turn a little to the side, right? So you're not aggressive. You're first of all, your energy is inviting them in, and then you turn a little bit to the side, and it lets them walk past you. And that's how you bring someone into the house and into the space. I also stay pretty quiet about when they first start because you don't want to look like a vulture. Um, And then I just sort of check on them. How are you doing? What's going on? I always have, I still do handwritten pieces of paper instead of digital. And I always put at the top of the page, even if it's the first guest that day at an open house, I always fill in another person's name. I make up a name, I put a name, an email address, and a phone number very clearly written. Because if someone sees someone else's handwritten name, email, and phone number, they're not afraid to put their name, email, and phone number. And then I look at it, and then once they've written it, I go over to the sheet of paper, and I confirm the information that they've provided. And during the conversation, I've asked them a little bit while they're going through the house what they're looking for. And those types of things, what, you know, how long have you been looking, the typical questions. And then I drop the bomb at some point and I say, well, I know of some off-market listings. I work this neighborhood all the time. Would you like me to stay in touch with you? Would you like me to give you any upcoming listings or off-market listings? I've never had a person say no. You can give them all kinds of fluff and all kinds of 
you know, flyers and cookies and whatever else, but they want value. And the value is when you have information that they need and they don't have. So I always have an off-market listing in my pocket. Always, 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 always when I do an open house. That's super smart. Yeah. I want an off-market listing right now. (laughs) Okay. Kim, how are you, Mark, just to back it up just a little bit before the people are coming in the door, Uh you mentioned signs. Are you, how are you marketing for the open house? How many signs are you putting out? Where are you putting them? What's the lead up ahead of time look like? So I post on social media. I tend to put the signs out the morning before if I can, if they won't get stolen. I put out about 10 signs I've put as many as 15 signs out and all of my signs are branded to me. I mean, my open house, I'm a believer in you've got to put your face on your signs and your business cards. There are a lot of theories out there. Yes or no. I believe uh, that you should have your face on your signs. So all even my open house signs have my face on them. At least somebody's looking at my signs 24 hours in advance with the directional. I do lots of social media. And then I open the door and I make sure that I'm there early and I make sure to stay five minutes late. I've picked up a lot of buyers because I waited an extra five minutes to shut the door. I mean, it's unbelievable. If it ends at four o'clock, somebody invariably will show up at 4.05. And I've picked up so many clients because I was willing to sit there an extra five minutes. That kind of leads into my next question. What, What day of the week, what time frame, how many hours, those details? So for me, it's Sunday two to four. I find that's the largest traffic because that's the known time to be doing an open house. If I don't do it two to four, I'll do it three to five so they can come after the other four o'clocks. And if I'm working a particular neighborhood, then I will do it on a weekday and I will do it four to six on a weekday. If I'm specifically working a particular neighborhood, And then if I don't have a listing in the neighborhood, I strategically find the house that is on the way into the neighborhood. So everybody's driving home from work and they're seeing all my open house signs and the house is very easy to see from the main street into the neighborhood. If I want to, if I want to build a business in that particular neighborhood. So, okay. You do the open houses, you're getting their information. They're writing their name and email down legibly because so many people do not. Mm -hmm. Um, Or even if they try, it's not. That's me. Mm -hmm. Uh, My handwriting is terrible. How do you stay in touch with them? What's what's your next move at the end of the open house? At the end of the open house, I send a video before I leave the open house. I literally will do a 30-second video and text them this little video. Hey, because again, they're getting to know you even though they don't think they are. So I just simply say, hey, it's Kim Wilkin. Just want to say thank you so much for coming by the open house. As promised, I will. I always say as promised, right? So I'm doing what they said they wanted me to do. As promised, I'm going to be sending you the off-market listing and I'll let you know, I promise not to bombard you with multiple emails, but I will send you anything that I find. Please let me know if you have any questions. Send, I send them my blank business card so they have all my details right there. I get home that night and I immediately follow up with the open house off market or whatever coming soon or whatever I've found because it's already in my back pocket, right? I already had it because I've already done the research with the other agents and I found something that is off market or a pocket listing or a coming soon. So I can go ahead and as soon as I send it to them at the end of that email that night, I can say, this is what I found. Would you like to set up a time to discuss this house or set up a showing? You know, and it's another hook and it's another way to get them with you and spending time with you is offering that, you know, for them to see that property is huge. It works every time. That's super cool because it's actually like an actual off market uh, property where, mm-hmm. whereas I know of a couple of real estate agents that will even go so far. So they say even go so far as to bring a whole ass binder with mm-hmm. printed pieces of paper that are just expired. So it's technically it's off market. No, yeah. they have that binder That's closed. Good. They're like, we have a lot of off market properties, but it's like literally anyone can see them because they're just expired. That's <laughs> so, really good. <laughs> but yours is, would, would actually be like a, you know, an off market property. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. So then you send the, e- the information to them via email. You sent them that follow up video text after saying, mm-hmm. as promised. So you're already establishing trust. 
Mm-hmm. How, what do you, what is a typical response? Is it typically done? Do people typically respond via email to that off market or to the text? What's like the next step after that? So typically I don't get a response from the text message, but I know they watched it, right? It's there. There, there's, it's so hard to not watch somebody sending you a little quick video. I mean, we're so used to watching reels and stuff on our phone. They're, I can't prove that they didn't watch it, but they definitely watched it. And then after they do respond to that email because I've hooked them, right? I've dangled the carrot. Here is the property. I can get you in that property. And of course, if they're an active buyer, they want to see the property. They want to know what's out there. Um, after that, I typically will start sending some of the templates that I have, whether it's a buyer, you know, I have a buyer presentation, or maybe it's my buyer introduction email that has multiple things in it about schools, crime rates, et cetera. And I may just start dripping on them, depending on the conversation we had at the open house, a particular section of that, and just start dripping on them. I'm pretty careful about not setting up a search unless it's once a week, unless they specifically ask for it or I start to engage with them. I find that, you know, spamming them with a search every day doesn't, they they get irritated because it's they're getting so many emails. So maybe once a week I'll set up a search, but I usually want to engage with them first before I've set up a search. And I just keep pounding away at them. And it, sometimes it takes nine, 12 months of drips. I mean, it's a lot of drips in the beginning, the first text, the first email, the next day, another email, two days later, another email, another text, just there's no necessary, no specific cadence. It really depends on how much information I got out of them to begin with. And then if they engage, then we're off to the races. If they don't engage, it's maybe four times in the first week and then three times in the second week, two times in the third week, and then it's once a week. And I keep sending them off market listings because that's what I told them I could provide. And eventually it's unbelievable. It may be six, nine months later and somebody goes, I want to see that off market listing. You haven't heard from them in six months and you honestly don't even remember who they are mm-hmm. but because you only met them in an open house. Right. But, and I feel like that's the classic real estate story. It's like my, I remember my first listing appointment I ever went on when I first got licensed. I totally bombed it. Like it was terrible. <laughs> and the guy was like, oh, you know what? I'm just, we're going to rent. You know, nothing against you. It was like, no, I'm just kidding. But <laughs> so he decides to rent. But following up with him three years later, and many of which he never replied, you know, I have the text where he just did it right back or whatever. He finally replied and was like, hey, I'm ready to sell. Like, when can you come over? And I'm like, dude, this is, this is just, I mean, it's just real estate, right? Uh, it's um, just real estate. Oh my God. Okay. But Kim, I'm not ready to let this go just yet with the open houses. So just thinking through, I know you said you don't do any like fancy, you know, balloons or shit or whatever, but in regard to setup, is there anything that you bring? Is there like background slow jams going on? Are we, is there any sort of setup or is it just unlock the door and, and roll? I always have water because if you follow the five love languages, people want what nobody in an open house wants touch, but some people want gifts. Some people, you know, that's you, that's how you deal with people. You watch them words of affirmation, touch, acts of service, quality time and um, gifts. So the second somebody walks through the door, you start gauging what their love language is. Of course, you're not going to touch them, but Hey, come to the open house. Give me a big old hug. Never seen them before. I always have water and I always offer them that gift of water, but I don't do cookies, et cetera. I also, where, what was the question? Oh, what do I set up? What Anything? is the setup? I always have really yeah. nice flyers. The flyers always have all of my information on them. I have business cards with all of my information on them. I bring all the comps for the area. That way, if they're looking for something that I can you know, provide that information right there in case I'm dealing with an engineering brain. I've got the numbers. If I'm dealing with a high eye on the disc profile, which is different than the love languages, you know, then I've got pretty pictures, you know, so I try and bring that type of stuff. Always have the details, always have the data, always have pretty pictures, always have a pretty flyer. Everything has my name on it and my brand on it. And there's always something they can walk away with besides the the bottle of water. What I would love to do, you can get bottles of water with your branding on it. And I really would love to do that. But Mm. yeah, dude, ask title. Title has surprised me with 
yeah, with like my brand, I was like, dude, you're it. I love you now. Uh -huh. We're working together. Uh huh. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, For sure. Okay. So hypothetically, you're in a slump. By the way, so smart to hit on all of the love languages and all of the disc. Like you're speaking our language. When you are in a slump and you're like, man, I gotta kick, I gotta pump up the pipeline here. How many open houses are you doing? What is the frequency? So people out there, they're like, oh, Kim just does one open house and then she gets paid for the next three years. You know, maybe they're thinking that. What's the reality? The reality is my first year in the business, I did 42 open houses that year and I closed three and a half million dollars directly from open houses. So I'm still receiving clients and residuals and referrals, et cetera, from those 42 open houses 13 years ago. The expectation, my expectation is I get one good lead from every open house. So how many good leads do I want to have? Well, that's how many open houses I need. So if I'm trying to fill the pipeline, I also believe in my market that the home I'm holding open, the lead I'm going to pick up is going to be buying half that price point. So if I'm holding a million dollar house open, then I'm going to be selling a five to $600,000 house to whatever lead I pick up. And I don't think it matters an inexpensive house or an expensive house. You can still pick up one high quality lead. So if I want, you know, five leads in the next month, then I need five good, solid open houses. And then those five leads are going to give me business because they're open houses potentially from four to nine months from now, if I continue to follow up with them for four to nine months. So I've done five to get five good leads, but I can't guarantee they're all going to get done. So if I'm hurting for business, I'm going to be doing two to three a week for two to three months. And that'll start filling my pipeline for the future. It also gets, you know, once you've been in the business for a while, you forget the basics and sort of going back to the basics is also helpful. So you start doing a basic, like an open house again, and it makes you smarter and better sitting behind your desk and doing the basics day to day, picking up the phone and calling your clients when you're supposed to, you know, all those things. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, and agents start to get cocky and they start to, Shelby, when you got that listing after years, some agents would have likely turned, no, I don't want to say nasty, but turn like somewhat mean and like short. Hello, is this still Kim's number? You know, like <laughs> agents will do that all the time and you're going to cut out people you know, like just because they don't respond for six months doesn't mean that you should then flip the script and be like, well, fine, Kim, don't answer me. You know, like you just lost it forever and you wasted all that time up until that portion and your reputation. But anyway, Kim, yes. what, what other, we've spoken about living your life on your terms and freaking uh -huh. traveling, touched slightly on social media, open houses. What else have we not spoken about that you want to cover? If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps. I have a great story that just happened to me after 12 years of being in the business Stop being an undercover agent um, is what my friend said to me. I was walking with her. She's been in the business 17 years. She's a badass. And she said, we have got to stop being undercover agents because there is a used car salesman kind of reputation. And so when we're in a room or we're walking into a store or something like that, we're not advertising that we're a realtor because they go, oh, yeah, you're one of them. I mean, you're just like everybody else. Everybody's a realtor. Well, my friend said to me, stop being an undercover agent. I happened to go to another small town outside of Austin one Saturday morning to meet a friend for coffee. And I walked into this store and this lady was like, hey, how are you? I'm like, fine. And she said, what brings you to, you know, this, this store in this town? And I said, well, I sell a lot of homes in this area. 
which was, I've sold two. I mean, you know, but I, I just said who I actually was. I didn't play it down. I didn't say I'm a realtor, you know, whatever else. I was just like, I sell a lot of homes very confidently. I'm a realtor. I'm a real estate broker. And I sell a lot of homes in this area. I just haven't been to the, you know, old center of town. She goes, really? You're a realtor? And I said, I am. And she goes, and you work this area? I do. $1.3 million listing I got out of that conversation. That was five minutes long. Yes. And wait, it gets better. Listing the property behind it. Her kids have a property. Getting that listing as well. So stop being an undercover agent and start proudly saying what you do. I mean, you got to give your value, but proudly say, you know, I'm a real estate broker. I'm a realtor. I, you know, help people buy and sell their homes. I help them with homes, largest financial investment they're going to make. Go ahead and say it, you know, say it out loud, be proud because you never know what's going to happen. I mean, it's going to this that me just saying I sell, you know, homes in this area and I've not been to this town. Random conversation is going to lead to around four to five million dollars worth of listings. Man. Yeah. It's all in the delivery. If, Mm -hmm. if you are ashamed or like a little bit like, Oh yeah, I'm a real estate agent. Like no one's going to fucking work with you, dude. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Man, that's amazing. Good for you. Yeah. And And normally I don't even bring it up. Right. Especially in, you know, I just don't even bring up what I do. Yeah. Wow. Kim, as we head to our wrap up questions, I want to ask, what is your favorite app or tool that you use? I have just started using Focus First again, which is a website. It's a subscription and it will help you, especially in this market with listings because you upload the comps or it will pull comps, I mean, comparisons around automatically and it gives charts and graphs and pictures. And it's very easy to walk in with a Focus First portfolio of graphs and charts for listing a house and your client, your your seller client says they want to list their house for 750000 and all of the charts and graphs say, well, if you want to list at $750,000, you are going to be way over here on this chart and you're going to be on the market for 180 days. Do you actually want to be on the market for 180 days? Because if you said you were going to be moving in three months, if you want to actually sell your house within three months, this chart shows you that you need to be listed at $650,000. It's it's a game changer. Focus First is a game changer when you're approaching listings for pricing. It's a game changer. So. That is so freaking cool. I love that. I just took note of it and I'm going to look it up afterwards. Love some graphs and some tra- dollars a month. But if you're listing heavy, it's amazing. Okay. Love. Okay. Next question. What events yes. are you going to in the next 12 months? I am going to a EXP happy hour tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Really? That's fine. Yes, I am for our local market. And I am going to our big conference in October, November in Miami. Mm -hmm. And then another event I'm going to, which has nothing to do with real estate, has to do with the other. The reason I do real estate, I am going to a points and miles conference in November. So I'm going to be around, since I'm a travel YouTuber, I'm going to be around some of the best minds for credit card hacking, et cetera, for free travel. So I'm going to that conference as well. That, those are the events I'm going to that wow. I know of um, right now. If you end up taking notes from that conference, my goodness, please send them over because sharing yeah. is caring. Oh, yes, sharing is caring. I am so bad at points and shit. So I haven't paid and- for a flight in several years unless I choose to. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And that's European I need to learn flights, from you. overseas flights, domestic flights. It's a choice to pay for it. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> slap across the face Allie <laughs> where can people find out more about you and how can we help you in your business people can find me with at Kim Wilkin real estate on YouTube on Instagram also Kim Wilkin is my website for real estate 
You can also find me at The Abundant Traveler everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, email, newsletter, all that if you're interested in learning about travel and tips and tricks and hacks and obviously credit card hacking for free travel. So, hey guys, if you are listening and you have a referral for Austin, Texas, send it to him. Yeah. And guys, if you want to hang out with me and Allie, you know the drill. We are Allie the Agent and the Shelby Show on Instagram. If you want more of us, you want daily access or want to join our community, Five Pillars Nation, let us know. We're always here for it. And otherwise, that is all we have for today. And Kim, thank you so much for coming on the show. You are a freaking badass and an inspiration. And otherwise, listeners out there, be a bro and share this show. Oh my God, it's funny because, well, shit, hold on. Let me mark the clip already. (laughs) I missed my place. It's okay. Ready, set, action. Well, today's, oh, (laughs) fuck you, Allie. (laughs) Yes. Okay. I love when I mess Shelby up when she's on her roll. (laughs) Today we have Kim (laughs) Wilkin. If you're looking to change brokerages this year so you can increase your business and you want to join us at eXp Realty and would like either myself, Ali Garced, or Shelby Johnson to personally sponsor you in, so that way you have access to two icon agents, text the word JOIN to either my number, 914-318-4918, or Shelby's number, 703 703- 399-4332. If I sponsor you and you have access to the both of us and everything that's Five Pillars Nation, we have the checklist, the systems, the processes to help you scale your business. And don't take our word for it. We've had agents switch brokerages to join us that were stuck making $300,000 GCI and they join us so they can scale. So text the word join to those numbers and we'll take the next steps.